Hello, welcome to my garage. Today we're going to take the Vectrex for the next step. In the previous video you could have seen how I cut the old parts off and the charger in. And I even had the batteries in for a test fit. Today I'm going to mount the batteries to the battery box. And hopefully we get as far that we can even connect everything up and get it running again. If you like this kind of videos, don't forget to subscribe. Let's get started. What I do is I drill four holes in the bottom. 10 millimeter holes. That goes a threaded rod through the three batteries. Not on the bottom, not on the top. And that's it. This is just to mark the position. First a small pilot hole through the aluminium and plastic. Next a bigger hole to make space for the washer. Now I have space for a washer, but there's a weld here. Now when drilling through the plastic to make room for the big uh, washer, uh, I had punctured a few extra holes into the bottom. That's no problem, they get under the, 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 they're in the range of the 10 millimeter rod, but unfortunately I don't have my guide now for drilling. So first I'm going to drill the ones at the back, which are still good. So I have replaced my jack, and now I'm going to try to drill them from the bottom. So I can put in the battery and then see if we can somehow get the right holes in front. I drill from the bottom so I can get them square to the battery box. Now the rear bolt holes are drilled and they line up. It's a 10 millimeter rod and 11 millimeter hole. So you can see they're going through and there's still some play. Battery is pretty centered. But the way it's supported now the battery wobbles. So let's change the support again and then we drill the front holes. I think I'm going to try to drill them from the, from the top. Now I'm drilling the last two from the top. I've made a bit bigger pilot hole. I've got now the other drill that's a little bit narrow, more narrow, so I can get closer. No, hopefully they're in the right place. I've also cut the uh, threaded rod to length. I don't believe this. The hole is way off. You can even see part of the hole besides the battery. No, the hole isn't round anymore. Let's see if we can get the battery in and get it to work. I've changed the hole a little bit with the drill bit. This was the third attempt. Now it's time to connect the first battery.
the motor controller goes on to the positive. The brown and red wire is the wire to the charger. And the BMS connection wire goes in. Second battery goes in. This one is connected with two connection wires. And also the BMS wire goes in. We should now have about 80 to 100 volts from here to here. 94.3, so they're connected. The wires on the side has to be connected now. If the third battery in place you can't reach it anymore. I cut a few pieces of aluminium to make a nice bracket so I can attach the BMS. I drill a few holes in the plastic. There goes the bracket with on the back side also a same size aluminium plate to get it strong onto the plastic. And I use tie wraps later to mount the BMS. The last battery goes in. I use some Loctite on the bottom to keep the nuts in place. Tightening the nuts so the batteries are nice and strong in place. I have the schematics of the layout for the wires that go to the motor controller. First I'll, I'll splice the new wires in. I'll do this one wire at a time. I deep pin them first. Then I solder the new wire onto the existing wire. Protect it with some heat shrink. And the connector goes back. No. Check, check, double check. The white wire goes to the right top. White, right top. Below that, the green one. Yeah, check. The black one goes to the second. Check. And the red one to the bottom one. Check. Now we're gonna play with high voltage so the gloves come on. I have the last of the connection wires that goes on first. No sparks, that's good.
so now we have almost 150 volts, 140. Under the 41.4 volts. Now on this connector go charger and uh, motor controller. We can't connect the motor controller without pre-charging. Now you can see the pre-charge device. It's now charging via the light bulb. Now I'm going to connect the motor controller and because it's pre-charged it won't spark inside the motor controller. I used the voltmeter to check it because this light bulb did not uh, light up when it's pre-charging and I wanted to make sure it worked. This is how I've connected the batteries to the charger and the motor controller. Here we have the motor controller with the original wires going to the positive of the bottom battery the negative of the top battery. The charger with the new cable goes also to the same negative and positive. And the batteries are connected to each other with the black wires crossing from the bottom negative to the middle positive and from the middle positive or negative to the top positive. And then goes the last BMS wire. Now the order of these wires is random. But the connectors are hard to get in with those tiny pins. Yeah, these are in. The main connector. Now everything is connected. First turn of the key on the, the new power. Yeah. It's looking good. Now let's see what happens if we plug in the charger. I'm a little worried about the high cell. And it stops. No, I think I have a problem over there. Uh, it says high 578 and it can't be 5.78 volts. Uh, there's a maximum of about uh, 4.2. So there's something going wrong. I used some heat resisting double sided tape to stick the BMS to the battery. And then I secure it in place with the tie wraps on the homemade brackets. This should keep the BMS nice in place. That's it for this video. 
We've done a lot. The bike is uh, all connected again. But there still has to be some things to be done. The programming has to be done. Hopefully the high cell problem gets fixed. I have no idea yet what it is. Maybe it has to do with the programming. Fingers crossed, it's that simple. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. See you on the next one.